All right, welcome everyone. We are Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Great, Great Teacher Onizuka, Onizuka episode 19. 19. All right. Okay. Takanzaki has uh, continued her acts of barbaric mm -hmm. terrorism. And, and escalated them to a rather explosive level. A very explosive level. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Something uh -huh. about that old uh, teacher from, like, elementary mm -hmm. or whatever yep. instigated some kind of, like, like French, you know, just, yeah. like, mm -hmm. your father, you something, know. Something crazy, yeah. What he is, uh -huh. who he did, what all of this yep. stuff or whatever. Um, so, yeah. yeah. All and, right. And it warranted all of this, which right. the, is the Torurama. Crazy. Yeah. Yes. Um. Um, and we have a uh, Toriko back. We do. Uh, we found we do out indeed. that uh, Kanzaki is uh, like her yeah, owner. Yeah. yeah, like has a very weird Pet relationship. Pet owner sort of thing. But yeah. more importantly, Onizuka has his work cut out for him right here. Onizuka because, definitely does. Because oh boy, he um. <laughs> oh my god. We gosh. have never faced a threat like this. No. 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 <laughs> yeah. Definitely not. And Ooh. yeah. And, it's mm -hmm. going to be crazy. It is. So, yeah. Guys, <laughs> without further ado, let's get into this. Oh, yeah. We still have a new opening to get That's used to. That's right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I love how it's like his uh, spirit like coming out of him. He's just like mm -hmm. dead, you know? And this is all in his imaginary world right. of just like, he's like, yeah, this is how I see myself. I just love the 3D. How oh, they're so proud of it. Huh. And they just have a, a layer just like pasted yep. on that, you know, on the... <laughs> they even use the effect of the white background behind it fading off of it to the side as like a, that's an artistic choice. <laughs> like, <laughs> I like the lonely, lonely. Lonely, lonely. Is that like the story of Onizuka's life? Lonely, lonely. I mean, yeah. Lonely, lonely. Doesn't this also feel like he thinks of himself as like James Bond, basically? Like, he's like, yeah, I'm so yep. badass. Huh. <gasps> Ah! Confirmed, Onizuka has a foot fetish. I mean, doesn't he have an everything fetish? Like, that this is true. I think he has just a fetish about fetishes, you know? He's probably just like... He has a fetish fetish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, That's you good. are not trying to, like brush this under the... <gasps> 22 years old. A bachelor. I love how he, he says that uh -huh. like every single time he's introduced to a, yep. a, a, a lovely woman. Yes. Oh no. No. Onizuka. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> His ears get going red. <laughs> oh my god. Konya's like Oh my god. Kikuchi. Kikuchi. Oh, yeah. dear lord. <laughs> ah, the Kikuchi goes in the look! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Books. I just love math. Oh. Dang. Oh, dang. Gotcha. Okay, here we go. <sighs> yeah, that's 
Oh, and she's trying to be like yeah. a really helpful like teacher and uh huh. Because it's important for teachers to not only look out for those that are you know you know falling behind, but also those that are wanting to push ahead. You know. Yeah, exactly. Both ends of the bell curve. Yeah. Oh. That's awesome. ショックでした。気がつくとあの子、私の教えられるレベルは。おお、your <笑>あの日が来たんです。あ、こっちの古いピラミッドに比べると、クフ王のピラミッドはまだちゃんとしてて。先生。何神崎さん。その崩れたピラミッドは中央国時代に作られた聖ウンセルト三世のもので、she probably. Oh. Oh. うるさい。うるさいのよあんたは。でん。おう。私は先生。先生が間違ったこと言うから確かにあんたは頭がいいわよ。おう、クラップ。当然のことじゃない。ねえ、先生。私の秘密教えてあげよう。お母さんが誰
いやーどうして藤森先生のところに通ってたんだそれは純粋な知識欲からよ<笑>中学生以上の勉強を教えてくれたから嘘だな何がタンパク質だ箱舟だよ<笑>お前は要するにあの先生に親の代わりになってほしかったんだいやいやいや嘘よでたらめ言わないでお前は帰る部屋があったけえ部屋が欲しかったんじゃねえのかわかんねえなら俺がわからせてやるぜ<笑>お前はただの中央だってことによ !Okay, how, how? What, what is this gonna be? <laughs> wait, wait, what? What is going on? What is going on? <laughs> All this pomp and presentation is amazing. <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> Here we go! I mean, he literally ran down the side of a building to save you, so. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> he is too cool! He is too cool! Oh my gosh! Oh, and her, her most yeah. important moments flash before her eyes. <laughs> no way, was that thing a parachute the whole time? No, I think they deployed some kind of net at the, uh... Oh, gotcha. At the bottom. Sure. So the motorcycle fell, but they just landed in the net. Ah! Huh! 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 Oh. Oh. Afraid even to live. Yeah. Uh, in the car, they didn't put the brakes on! Oh no! Oh <laughs> no! <laughs> R.I.P. Cresta. He's like, yeah. Oh, work. I love this! This is so good! Uh huh. Yeah, yes. Good. Yes. 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 Nice. She asked him. She didn't say genie, genie, well, you know. And, and she asked him to teach her. Oh my god. Oh my god. What's that? Oh my god. What? <laughs> oh man, what an oh, that episode. Was great. That was what great. an episode. That was that was amazing. That was fantastic. And what I love uh. about it is that she was constantly asking the other teacher to teach her stuff. So this is kind of... It she's is that. Found a, she's found a replacement, you know. Yep. <sighs> Wait, so... Hold on. Hold on. That class that she yelled the secret out to... Mm-hmm. Wasn't, uh... I don't know her... The nickname is Toriko, but, um... Tomoro, or... Or what? Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, weren't her sure and, in there? Weren't her and Aizawa there? Well, they didn't actually say Aizawa yet. Oh, okay. So but... Aizawa wasn't necessarily there. Gotcha. Yeah. Maybe that's why she ended up uh, getting Tomoro to be, or Toriko, or whatever, to mm -hmm. be, uh, you know, on her side like that. Sure. Because she knew the secret, you know. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm. It's interesting, this ending seems to actually be hinting at, like, specific scenes, you know? 
Like, these seems like actual scenes that'll be in the anime. Oh, dang. Dang. That was really Great good, teacher Onizuka. Yep. I didn't expect it to go this well so quickly, though. Yeah, we don't know how much over it is, but it does mm-hmm. seem like he's won. Like, yeah. Like, yep. Or this is a new starting point, you know? Right. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, I love this episode. That was really good. <laughs> this is a really good episode. Yeah. <laughs> so Kanzuki's it's almost like it's been it's a new fresh start for mm-hmm. her and potentially Onizuka with regards to how right. he connects with her. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, like yeah, this is this might be resolved, right? Or at least it's it's. Uh, I think the the whole thing of a new beginning that a new we were beginning, talking about sure that that is really a perfect way of, of saying it because but that is in a way saying that the past part is right, kind exactly. of resolved. Yeah, now we're now we're to the present, right? And right, that can be a whole new ball game and and all all of mm-hmm. that. Um, yeah, also. New beginnings for someone else, too. Mm. Yeah. Poor Cresta Chan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's an emergency break? Like, <laughs> my deepest sympathies. The way, the, way, like, the way it was set up, that we're like, uh-huh. we just have to just rag on this poor Cresta. Mm-hmm. Like, the minute they were going to take it, I'm like, well, this is not going to end well. Yep. And nope. Nope. Yeah. Fuyutsuki is like, did she a even put paper, it in park? Like that she said she was what, a paper driver? So she's yeah. like uh she like delivers newspaper or something. Oh yeah, so she probably has like a like a moped or something like that. Something you know? like that, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. But <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Boy. Oh my gosh. Boy. I feel worried now for Fuyutsuki because she's the kind of she's person She's complicit to theft and destruction of well, property. Well, like that too, but also that like like she's the kind of person who's good natured enough. I think she might just tell, tell him and be like, "I'm sorry, I'm so sorry." I or did or this. Onizuku would be like, "Okay, Fuyuki Chan, you must not do that." You know, like, no, no, mm-mm, no. Yeah, Onizuka. This would, never happened. Onizuka would probably try. Oh no, wait, the it, I'm so dumb. It's already planned out because they don't. The the vice principal didn't know that was Onizuka with the gang. So the gang stole the car, oh. and they wrecked it. See? Right, the gang, the being gang, up and, and you just tell that car. you just mm. tell that to the insurance people. Yep, yep. and be like, uh, a bike gang came and stole my car. It's like no, literally, everyone at the school saw the bike gang and stuff, and you know, yeah, uh-huh. Cresto Chan will live on. She will return. <laughs> oh yep. man. Okay, oh, so boy. the trauma that specifically was uh, handled with uh, the past teacher and Kanzaki Was not at all what we thought it was. Not at all what we thought it was. So what mm-hmm. it is is that Kanzaki was, you know, coming from a, from a broken home essentially. But it's not right. broken by the actions of the parents. But it's coming from the fact that she doesn't really have a full house. She doesn't have a full right. family. And we mm-hmm. don't know where mom is right now. And we don't know how dad treats her, you know? Because, well, like... Well, that, you know, did, didn't we kind of have it I'm told kind here of, that there was no... That, that he didn't care about the mom. But, I mean, I'm guessing if, if this was something that was... That, that she was, you know, specifically sort of, like, brought about intentionally... That's what I thought. ...to be a smart child... Then I'm guessing the dad wouldn't like, uh, you know, then like abandon her or something like well, no, that. No, but I think that's the thing. They matched. They matched. Um, they matched two smart people. Yeah. No, I don't think they matched people though. I don't think the dad was ever in the equation. Maybe I'm misinterpreting it, but I was interpreting it as actually like just, you know. Oh, just, just they went done in they, the lab or something. Yeah, like, just done in the lab. Yeah, exactly. Uh, sure. And yeah. then and then they took whatever they had in their lab and then put it and had her be the host for it the mom sure okay and then yeah and then uh and, and then, then she basically has just been living by herself by herself which is because crazy. because all the mom was there to do was just, just to give birth give yeah. birth which mm-hmm. is you know of course like a process and stuff but right. because it wasn't her child she probably has no sense of ownership for well well she's it's the idea that she's not supposed to it's like you know we are we are renting out your your oven you know for for nine months you know and then yeah Thank you for your service. And we might be misinterpreting this, but right, we totally could be. But I, I got the vibe that there's no, there's no one. Like, she's, she's not with you know anyone. Be- that's why she, she lives alone. Is that they basically tested her with some kind of government thing or whatever, and they're like, 
she fits the definitions of a genius of a prodigy mm-hmm. we'll, so we'll we're, take care we're of her going to take care of her but, through like i don't know the foster system or yeah it, but or the thing something. is that they they yeah i'm because I'm, I, I okay i don't know i can't remember exactly the details of what onizuka said but it's the idea of you you wanted her to be the replacement parent that like you never had or something like that and i'm so, something along those lines. Replacement parent was right. definitely replacement there, yeah. parent was definitely there, and the idea is that is it a replacement parent that you literally like you did not have one, or just replacement parent because your your parent or parents or or whatever were not that good, you know? Um, yeah. Either way, yeah. it's rough because mm-hmm. you end up having someone who's starved for human connection, yep. for quality human mm-hmm. connection, someone that's going to love you and care for you and just be there. And that is something that every single human being needs. Some mm-hmm. people need it way more than others, but especially those that don't have much of it at all. Like, like right. you, you listen to the stories of babies that like were you know never touched, you know. For oh like yeah, a certain and, and they literally die within like a year or something like that, you know, because they need love. Yeah, yeah. there's there's some. There's some crazy stuff that happened. And at the very least, there can be some serious mental health problems that oh, yeah. develop because of this. So yep, yep. I think it makes perfect sense that she lashed out so vindictively, not just because the teacher royally screwed up, like really mm-hmm. messed up, but, but also that was all she had. Also because that was all she had. Yeah, mm-hmm. her essentially her whole right. world was taken from her, and her yep. first human being that she probably ever trusted mm-hmm. to this extent. Yeah violated that trust in order absolutely to, in order to be betrayed you first had to have trust in the you can only have betrayal to the same extent that you had trust yeah so you know if it had just been some random teacher that just was an asshole right right you know even if it was a consistent thing right yeah that, that wouldn't have i mean that probably would have made the person more jaded and such yeah and you but, would have hated that teacher and you would have hated that teacher absolutely mm-hmm. you know but but the but it ad- wouldn't have broken your psyche like exactly internal. it wouldn't have it wouldn't have probably sent you on a on a vindictive path of I will destroy all teachers you know yeah um but this but this, this yeah that yeah mm-hmm. and and she yeah. was ten she was like, ten she was ten regardless of the prodigy thing mm-hmm. like, like that just means that yeah. she's able to solve more complex problems and absorb and memorize more data like being able right. to to be able. But like emotional idea, intelligence, exactly. Is, EQ and IQ mm-hmm. are not the same thing. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and especially man. depending on how her home situation is, her EQ could be like that. Could have been where she got all of it, kind of. Yeah. Like from other than just what she's able to synthesize through like observing people and you know at school and things yeah. like that. You know? No emotion or happiness whenever she was at school. Yeah. That's a huge thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Dang. That. That. Whew. Like, if she had gone on developing that way, you could definitely see, like, some serious, like, sociopathic tendencies, like, coming from that, just from... As if we hadn't seen those already. Well, no, that, yeah. I think that mm-hmm. this is an example of that. Right. And, and yeah. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and that's the that's the crazy thing, because in order for... Whenever someone is able to get close to you, right, mm-hmm. that means that they can hurt you, right? Mm-hmm. Connection, that, that happens. Because you care. Yeah, exactly. You care, right? If yeah. you didn't care someone about you, could they really hurt you, you mm-hmm. know? Like, sure, probably, maybe a little bit. But, but the wound would heal. Exactly, very quickly. Um, but here, I'm actually really interested to see if they mend the relationship between Kamzaki and the other teacher. Because... And if they don't, that's fine. But the other teacher gave Kanzaki an incredible thing. Especially mm-hmm. if, yeah. you know, that, that whole idea of her literally, like, just not having parents that, yeah. you know, are, are the role of being parents, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, then, yeah. And By now the-, the classroom dynamic is about to change so much. Yeah. By the way, I want to quickly just address uh-huh. something, just to preface something that we said just earlier, is that Yes, someone who you don't know could absolutely hurt you tremendously. Yeah. But in terms of betraying you, mm-hmm. right, that's exactly. what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 You can absolutely have a stranger come in and ruin your life. Absolutely. Yeah. But, but we're, we're talking mm-hmm. about specifically along the lines of trust and betrayal. Right. And especially when it comes into like like words and things like that yes because because you know people can say stupid stuff you know whatever and, and right. horrible yeah. mean stuff right and that that can <laughs> the internet just, exactly <laughs> you'll but, have all kinds of 
right. weird, gross slander thrown your way. Yeah, for but no the reason really. But the the words that will cut you right to the heart are the ones from the people close to you. Yes, you know because we allow them to we allow them in. We right, let them exactly. pass our boundaries. We, we give them. We give them. Yeah, exactly. We let them pass their boundaries so that their words matter. Because yep. we want that. We want to have people whose words matter to us, right? Yeah, and that's, we want that, that connection. Exactly. That's how you yeah. can have positive you know just connection right that's how you can have good things happen in life i'm so with that comes the potential for bad yeah just to go on Mm -hmm. this with before we go to the the funnier parts oh Uh i'm so glad that this teacher was willing to talk to onizuka about yes there are so many stories where the person just doesn't Mm -hmm. talk about those kinds of things and then we need to wait for five episodes for you know the melodrama to become too much for even the people making this yeah series for them to actually you know like do something different yeah, yeah. so mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really glad that that went down the way it did yeah and that she was willing to talk mm-hmm. about it yep. which is something that i do feel like is something that it, it was kind of brushed over and i don't know if the show is kind of forgetting about this but the fact that she then told the secret then to a bunch of students in addition to onizuka does seem a little bit careless just just in my opinion oh gotcha. and that she was so emotional oh, about sharing uh-huh. the whole memory and stuff right that right. she went and just told kunio kikuchi and random boy number three uh-huh. that yeah, we yeah. don't know the name <laughs> yes, of right. um <laughs> right that that's mm-hmm. her her secret and stuff. yeah so i hope those boys sworn to secrecy well and i respect feel... the uh yeah if nothing else <laughs> Onizuka would kick the crap out of them if they... Onizuka you know. would kick the crap out of them. Kikuchi could make their lives a living hell. Because <laughs> yes. I, because Kikuchi is a responsible boy. While he is... He, while he does some questionable he things... He's devious. He, he's devious, but he's he's a responsible boy. I mean, and, he... Jacob, uh, okay. he knocked out the vice principal. Well... Just to follow Hey, them. hey, he's responsible to a fault with <laughs> certain things. But... And then... And then Kanzaki herself... I, I would think they would have enough common sense yeah. not to mess with her. Yeah. Like, even someone like Kunio. Um, but, yeah. Okay. But, then, but, but, but on a more comical yes, side. Yes, yes. The classroom dynamics. Oh, my gosh. With this development for Rumi Kanzaki. Yeah. Now, for one, Aizawa really seems like the only person left that Onizuka needs to teach, right? Well, yeah, that's and gonna be that's gonna that, be tough. Like that, that's, yeah, that's gonna be tough. But like with Aizawa mm-hmm. seeing that Kanzaki now sees him as the great teacher, Onizuka, maybe possibly, you know, is it's going along that direction. Yeah, it could, it could potentially then, be like then th- th- that. Pfft. Yeah. I'm curious to see. I don't know if Kanzaki would really care enough to do this, and the, she or she might care enough about Aizawa that she wouldn't do this. But because she's smart enough, uh-huh. if she wanted to, she could probably just talk to Aizawa and be like, "Hey, come on, like you need to deal with this stuff that you know you haven't dealt with, you know, kind of a yeah. thing." Yeah, um, it could be the secret weapon against Aizawa, really. Sure, because yeah. Kanzaki is one that they are kind of, I would say, peers. And with, you know, Kanzaki and Naizo are peers mm-hmm. in that regard. And I would say that uh, on some level, Kanzaki speaks a language that even Onizuka can't really fully speak. Oh, yeah, for sure. Specifically with regards to... Probably 13 of them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but specifically on the, the mm-hmm. more metaphorical note. Yeah. Break through a couple of the boundaries mm-hmm. that Aizawa would have specifically up for Onizuka... Right. That she yep. wouldn't have up immediately for someone mm-hmm. like Kanzaki. Yep. However, I do think that mm-hmm. if Kanzaki is, you know, ends up being made better by this, I don't think she would come back to the school. So I think really? she might also leave the story. Like, I, I don't think okay. she would leave they could do forever, that. but I think she, would, she wouldn't She would come all the time. I think she might sure. spend time with Onizuka or maybe come yeah. to like mm-hmm. a class every once in a while. Right, but the thing is like she doesn't learn anything in the classes anyways, no. so she would probably just study on her own and then or maybe come to like the one homeroom class that Onizuka Exactly, right. Just just to just to basically hang out there and whatever, right? I mean, because she did learn something from Onizuka today. She did. She did indeed. Yeah. Um yeah. So there's that. And and I and on the whole Aizawa thing, I could see that not happening even if she stayed at the school because sure. I could see there being something where Aizawa is basically like, 
you know, they, they actually have like a, a good connection. Okay. And as was like, don't, don't mess with me on this. You know, don't, don't, sure. I know, I know how you are with words. Stop it. You know, yeah. don't do that. Um, cause you know, people don't like to be meddled with. No, uh, definitely not. But, but oh boy, like they, they could have some really crazy antics, like crazier than usual. Yeah. Now that, now that Kanzaki is, <laughs> is not going to be terrorizing the school. I don't think. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah. I don't see how they're going to continue on with her story in such a way to where she's not a member of the squad, essentially. Uh-huh. But if they choose to have her be still a third party, mm-hmm. what they could do is basically have it be a more of a diplomatic thing where Kanzaki still doesn't like or trust teachers. But she trusts Onizuka. Sure. So mm-hmm. it's a thing of where Onizuka needs to kind of be like, come on, uh-huh. come on, yeah. we're working on this. And she's mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. Well, and, mm-hmm. <laughs> and she could even be doing something where maybe she's still bored and she still, oh, still yeah. really wants to keep herself entertained. So yeah. she still does crazy stuff, but it's not necessarily quite as vindictive on teachers. You know? Sure. Because there were some lines where it's like, okay, you don't want to bring actual physical harm to people. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Yeah. I can imagine she could get very creative without ever crossing that line. Totally. They brought up again in this episode the whole idea of teachers and the fallibility of people, but mm-hmm. also specifically where teachers tend to mess up. And that is in the area of pride, which I found to be a very pointed thing. Like, the teacher was willing to admit it was my uh-huh. pride that was yeah. shattered. Mm-hmm. And they went in to show it. Yeah. And that was oh, yeah. very disturbing to see her there with just the TV on static, just uh-huh. like <laughs> yeah. just just freaking out about the idea of her worth right. being invalidated by some ten year old. A ten year old who's a prodigy comes mm-hmm. in and says, You can't teach me anything. Right. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I have seen, just as someone who has parents, mm-hmm. I have seen parents go through something very small similar to that though it's a very small version of that but it's where the parent is unable to accept that the child is an adult essentially sure Mm -hmm. and that's something that is probably a little bit of a a a pride hit but it's not necessarily as straight a pride hit and more of just a my uh, baby's grown up yeah more just a role removal Mm -hmm. yeah idea that i think that's what it also could be here as a teacher is that you as a teacher don't have that role necessarily in terms of Uh the function of being a teacher but you can still teach them things by the fact that you have more experience right you can yeah the dependency might not be there exactly but that doesn't mean that there's no connection or that you have no purpose Mm -hmm. i think nothing to give yeah yeah, nothing to give exactly Mm -hmm. so that's something that i feel like is is very genius like wisdom to to learn is that just because someone knows more than you or just because someone uh, has a specific area that you specialize in that they completely exceed past Mm -hmm. and above beyond anything you could ever hope to achieve in that area doesn't mean you still can't, you know, be valuable to them. You still can't be Mm -hmm. um, useful to them. If nothing else, you have different perspectives. Yeah, Yeah. And, and this is something that I think is is cool that they're showing because it shows the value of onizuka he is not that smart academically when it comes to a lot of these other teachers but he has so much to give still oh yeah the thing is though is that he can't lazily do it he is the great teacher onizuka not the lazy Mm -hmm. teacher onizuka he can't sit on the couch and play video games if he wants to teach them right he has to think. He has to be creative. Yep. He has to personalize also the teaching method that he's using sometimes to the specific kid, oh, which yeah. means sometimes he needs to focus a lot on an individual kid that is mm-hmm. being a really big problem. Yep. And that is what we've been seeing in an episodic format for this show. Right. But like that's real life. And that's and, just well, that's just mm-hmm. good stuff right there. And that's usually where public schools fall flat is that they're teaching the bell curve, right? Cuz they kind of have to, right? But because of that, any of the exceptions get sort of left by the wayside, right? The the individuals aren't addressed. Right. So this teacher here was doing the right thing. 
was trying to yeah. essentially say, hey, I, I see that you're not yeah. you're not engaging much in class. Mm -hmm. So she's going oh, great yeah. as a teacher above and beyond. This is yep. she's not yep. getting paid for this. Oh yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> this is this is her being an awesome teacher. And I think that the tough thing also we need to acknowledge here is they're saying that just because just because teachers, you know, go above and beyond and stuff like that, they're capable of making mistakes because they're people too. Mm -hmm. And this mistake was one that she wasn't really, she wasn't really prepared for this, you know, level of magnitude, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a trap, <laughs> <Yeah>. you know? <laughs> Our shields can't handle firepower of that magnitude. Right, yeah. so... Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. I think in some ways it also gives me a little bit of grace to give to this teacher because it's something that I think is hard to account for. The idea that teachers mm. can just get blindsided by things that they couldn't have seen coming. Sure. They are still responsible for how they react and oh, respond, yeah. yep. though. Mm -hmm. So she is 100% yeah. at fault with regards to how she responded. Right. But, but we can totally mm -hmm. give her a little bit of, of, of mercy and grace, essentially, yeah. for the fact that there is no way she could have been prepared for this. Right. But if anything, now she has a new starting point to where she can learn well, about mm -hmm. humility. It's the it's the idea that you learn most when you're the, when you're the teacher, not when you're the student. Oh yes. And in this yes. case, because of the kind of person that Kanzaki was, mm -hmm. she forced her teacher to learn a lot very quickly, <laughs> and she wasn't able to keep up. Right. Nope. And, nope. That's that's got to be that's got to be stressful. That's got to be yeah. tough, yeah. especially when it's a ten year old. Like. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of the things, though, that I find really funny, this is just a random thought that I had. Mm -hmm. What did Onizuka tell his biker gang when he was like, okay, I have a mission for all of you. <laughs> you need to come to this school because there's a student there and they need to teach her a lesson. I think less information is better. I think he just said, I need you to come here. We're, we're going to ride around. We're going to drive off this mm -hmm. bridge yep. and we need you all to catch us with this big net. Sound yep. good? Yeah, sure. Sure, boss, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This will be fun. Yeah, getting the gang back together. You know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there you go. That that's really all he needed to say. Sure. I just I love the idea of like Onizuka like coming to them and being like, "All right, since I'm a <laughs> big teacher now in the you know in, in in the pro world, I need some help." You know. I love that uh, Ryuji was even there, like dressed up with like the the wait, weird was handkerchief he? and stuff. Yeah, he was I didn't one notice. of them. He was one of them with the handkerchief. He's like, "Why did you make me have to come here and dress up like this?" Yes. Too? Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, he's like, "I need everyone here. Yeah. Everyone." <laughs> he like calls like the special like phone line or something, uh -huh. or the special email, or, or however they stay or in contact. Pagers, back yeah, there. and everyone's like, "The call has been issued." <laughs> And then they go out. Uh, it's hilarious. Guys, oh, it's a fun episode. Man. It was a very, very deep episode. Very, yes. very mm -hmm. good episode for us to understand a lot of where Kanzaki's coming from. Yeah. And now she might be willing to learn from Monizuka now. Mm -hmm. At least she wants to learn how to ride a bike. So, yep. Yeah. Guys, it was awesome. If you want to see the next episode's reaction, though, right now, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get an early access there. You can watch full-length reactions there. And all this comes with Discord access, where you can chat with us about stories or just whatever. And if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time. time.